Hi everyone. Uh, we'll just get started in one minute or so. Uh, we wait for some people to join us as they're logging in. So today we are going to be talking about uh, that why you should be doing uplift modeling. What is uplift modeling? Also called incremental modeling, persuasion modeling. And essentially, what you want to be doing is that you want to have uh, a modeling or a structure in place where you're not giving discounts to everybody. Usually this is what happens. Companies just give discounts blindly to everybody. And we'll be diving into why that is a bad practice and why that should not be you as a company doing because your resources are so valuable. And moreover, uh, we call them the people who are sleeping dogs. So if you give out discounts to everybody, then you're going to be disturbing people who will never, who are not going to be buying the product when they're disturbed. So I'll get started on this one. I'll share my screen with everybody as, as more and more people join us. Um, if my, let me know if there's any problem in the audio and video. I'll share the screen. Okay, perfect. Um, so stop giving discounts, use AI to identify persuadable customers. My name is Harsh Gupta. I'm the head of AI at Cliently. Uh, introduction. So if you're simply building up, so the normal practice is that you simply build a machine learning. By the way, if you're not doing any machine learning, so then none of these discussions come into the picture. But if you're doing machine learning, and you're executing promotion campaigns uh, where you're deciding if the customer is going to buy the product or not buy the product. This is uh, not the most efficient strategy. This is good. You should be doing it, but this is not the perfect thing. You can do much more. So there are some customers who will buy a product anyways, even without a promotion campaign. And they're called sure things. So no matter how much discount you give them, they like you, they like your brand, they're anyways going to buy from you. So these people are called sure things. And uh, so, so I was talking about, uh, there are some people who are called do not disturbs or the sleeping dogs. So these are the people whom you send an offer, whom you send out a discount. Normally, uh, you're not sending discount, you're not triggering them, they're, they are renewing their subscription or they're buying your product for the first time. But if you send them an offer discount, or if you're triggering them, then uh, they'll just stop subscribing to your business. They'll no longer buy product from your company. These are what we call do not disturb or sleeping dogs. Now, uh, as I was saying that the normal machine learning is not enough, then what should we be doing? So the solution is uplift modeling. And let me dive deeper into this one using this chart. So, so on the very, on the x-axis, you see that these people are going to buy if not treated. And on the y-axis, you're going to be seeing these people will buy if they're treated. So treatment here means uh, sending them a discount, sending them an offer, incentive, etc. So if I look at these people, buy if treated, let's say uh, the treatment here is giving a discount, okay? So, so, so these people are going to buy if they're treated, if they're giving discount and if they are not to given any discount, they'll not be buying. So these people are called persuadable. We are trying to persuade them with an incentive, with a discount. Now, now looking at these people, sure thing. So buy if treated, yes. If, so even if I do not give them any discount, they're still going to buy from me. And if I give them discount, then also they're going to buy from me. So it's a loss for my company. The sure things they would have bought anyways, I gave them discount and now I have cost to it. Uh, so if I talk about now these two people, buy if not treated, no, no. So these people are the lost causes. Uh, you send them an offer, you send them discount, you do not send them discount, they'll never buy the product from you. They'll never choose your subscription. So. It doesn't really matter if anything, there's a cost to uh, discount. There's a cost to sending out email or other uh, outreach. So why do it? Shouldn't. Now, these are the most, uh, so, so these are the people I'm mostly concerned about. 
and i'm also uh, secondly concerned about these people the sleeping dogs so look at this one buy if not treated they would have bought it they would have renewed their subscription they would have bought it but now i gave them i gave them a discount they suddenly not going to buy uh buy if treated no so so these are the people i really need to be careful about uh, if i wake them up they're not going to buy it. they're not going to renew their subscription so let's dive deep, deeper into the definition of uplift modeling now uplift modeling is kind of a machine learning technique and it has uh, in last 10 years there have been uh, five or six python packages for it as well so it's a machine learning technique to find out which customers should be targeted and which customers should be left alone shouldn't be targeted it's also called persuasion modeling increment modeling treatment effect modeling true lift modeling net modeling various names marketers usually know know it by the name net modeling persuasion modeling and incremental modeling some of the applications of uplift modeling include uh, how should i increase the revenue of my advertising marketing campaign uh, where i can get uh, more customers to buy in using the discount and uh, if i have to retain more customers to avoid churn then which customers i should be sending out a trigger which customer i should be contacting because some customers i may predict that they will be churning but if they like sleeping dogs if i shake them up then they'll definitely churn so we need to be careful in that one a very famous use case uh, the the 2012 uh, campaign uh the 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 between uh, barack obama it was his second presidential campaign and uh, the team had a very uh, so it wasn't like uh, too much uh, they didn't have a lot of money in the adverts they did want to but they kept it very restricted and they targeted the persuadables the people whom they thought uh, could be persuaded so a very famous use case comes to my mind when i think about the uplift modeling okay Uh, so the problem. So, so I'm going to be doing a hands-on workshop. Let's talk about the problem. What is the problem? So you don't want to be giving discounts to everyone. Losses for your company. Besides, some people think that you're not. Some people have this actually. I I also think it this way that whenever I'm being given discount too much, I think, huh, there's something wrong with them. Uh, maybe am I the only one buying the product? What's wrong? Uh, so so there's a strong need and and if i feel that way i wouldn't buy the product so i'm like a sleeping dog in this case if you give me discount i'll not buy it if you don't give me discount i may buy it so strong need to identify persuadables uh so so now i'm getting a little technical about this uplift modeling because i'll be then jumping into the two model and one model approach and then a hands on workshop So uplift modeling, what it essentially does is uh, suppose you're charged of a marketing campaign to sell a product, okay, and you get an estimated conversion rate that fifty percent people you target they're going to be converting. That's a big number, but to make the numbers look simple, and uh, if you are applying some promotions, then you get a forty percent conversion rate. So the uplift score that you're getting from the customers overall is a ten percentage increase in the points. and for some customers so this is an average uh, uh, percentage point for some customers uh, this conversion rate may be 20% for some conversion this will be minus so the higher or the positive the conversion rate the better it is because i want to be targeting those people and the range of the uplift score can between can vary between minus 1 to plus 1 i can always bring it in the range also minus 100 to plus 100 percentage So now we have two ways to do it. So the first very simple thing which I'll be doing in my hands-on workshop is that we have a two-model approach. So so what I so what I'll do is uh, so I have this uh, column, the target column, which says zero or one, if the people converted or not, and then I have this another column uh, which says that if the person were treated or not. So the control group is uh, when there was no treatment, when there was no discount. and uh, the treatment group is when there was a discount to everybody so then i'm going to build two separate models one for the non discount be uh, the no offer and one for the offer people so uh, then i'll have the new data set i will score the values and i will get the probability from both the models 
and then I'll be doing a subtraction uh, from the dis uh, from the probabilities when I'm giving the discount uh, to the probabilities when I'm not giving the discount. So whichever is the highest, I'll take the top 10, top 20 percent. Those will be my persuadables. And whichever are the most bottom ones are the ones which are the sleeping dogs. So I need to be avoiding them. So this is what I'm going to be doing in my hands-on workshop. There's another fantastic way to do it. You don't build two models, you just build one model. So essentially that model will uh, take you define to the model that look, this is my treatment column. Uh, this is my target column and it automatically takes care of it. So internally it builds a model, it does the subtraction and it tells you the uplift for everybody. So it doesn't involve calculations on the Excel. It doesn't involve building two models. And that is what most of the packages are doing actually. The casual ML, the PyLift, the R uplift package, the Opossum. And there are a few others I've seen recently. Okay, so let's do this hands-on workshop. We'll take us some 10, 10, 15 minutes and let's see how we can do it ourselves. So I'm looking at the data set. Just give me one minute. Okay. So this is my data set. Uh, this has uh, roughly 859 rows. So uh, this is like the combination of both, both of them. So this is, I send out offer to everybody, discount, 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 discount. And uh, then there's column called target conversion. Okay that how many people are converting. So one means the person responded, bought the product, zero means the person did not. And 15% 15, and 15 of the time people are responding, 85% time not responding. And then on this side, I have offer, no offer. I didn't send out offer to anybody, same number of people. At the very top, I split the data equally. So it's a very equal representation. And then the target conversion, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So now what I'll do is uh, I'm going to be using a two model approach. So I'm going to be using our no code platform. We don't have to do any code. We just have to upload the data set. We just have to say, uh, okay, I'm going to be using this one. I'm going to be building a model on this one. I just basically have to tell the system what the target variable is. And from there on, the system takes care of everything, including data cleaning, feature engineering, model building, it will just spit out the results. So taking some time to upload, but once it gets uploaded, uh, so I did this report actually, let's get into this one. So this one is the uplift discount treatment variable. So this one is when I give, uh, I just need to define the target here. Uh, my target here is target conversion. My ID is the prospect ID, start analysis. So now it will automatically do the machine learning for us. We don't worry about it. So it will do data cleaning, feature engineering, etc. But moving on, I already ran this report a few minutes ago. So I'm looking at this. Uh, I got an accuracy of 84% on test data set, which is pretty good. All I care about is scoring for right now. I am going to be using a data connection. I'm going to be using the scoring file. So let me show you what the scoring file looks like. So this one doesn't have the column target conversion. These are the new bunch of people who came into my system. I do not know if I should be making them a discount or not. So this is the scoring file. Uh, and I built a model on this one, uplift discount, and I'm trying to going this scoring file on this one. And then I'm going to run a mod, uh, build a model on this one, and I'm going to be using this scoring file on this one. So I'll have something like this thing. Download, open. Okay, so for everybody now, I have the, the predictions, the one probability, if they'll respond or not, what is the probability? So then I'm, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I have it actually saved here. Okay. So I got the probability of responding when I gave them the discount. Uh, again, remember, these are the same bunch of people. Uh, and I built two models and then I scored the values in those two models. This one is the probability no discount. So what I'm going to be now doing is I'm going to do a subtraction on them. 
So once I do the subtraction, I'll get a lift that, okay, this minus this is this. So the, the very top people, which have a very high positive value, these are the persuadables. So for example, let's just say out of these, how many people are there? Um, 16, 1700 people out of these 1700 people, I'm going to be taking uh, up till 0.3. Let's say 0.3 is this thing. Okay. So these 188 people are persuadables. If I look at this one, um, if I send them a discount, the probability of responding is so high. But if I do not send them the discount, the probability of responding are so low. So hence the difference, the higher the difference, the more the persuadable. So I'm going to reach out to these 188 people. These are the persuadables. Now talking about the bottom most people. So let's look at these people. Um, and let's look at the, which one is this? Okay, these two. Let's look at the, uh, this person at the very bottom, okay? So if I send them the discount, this guy probability of responding is 0 0.012, pretty low. But if I don't send him the discount, this guy's probability of responding is 0 0.9. Huh, interesting. So these are the sleeping dogs. If I if I if we wake them up, they'll just not buy the product. So I'll take some people from the very bottom and uh, let's just say all the people who are minus, I'm not going to be giving them a discount. And even higher, I shouldn't be giving out discount. So let's just say it was all negative people. Um, the people with the negative lift differences. Okay. So these people, I'm not doing anything. I'm not sending them a uh, discount. All I'll do is I'll just send them the promotion campaign and I'll have no discounts in it. These uh, top, uh, top 200, 300 people, I'm going to be giving them something, uh, a, a discount. And remember rest of them, uh, rest of them fall into these categories. Rest of them fall into the, the lost causes uh, and the sure things. So sure things, the, the people lying in the values in the middle from zero to let's say, whichever threshold I decide point to, those are the sure, short people. So I don't, uh, I give them discount. I do not give them discount. They'll anyways buy it. Plus discount has some cost to it. So, so I'll not be giving them discount most likely. They're short things. So that's, that's how uh, we do two modeling. Uh, let me get back to the presentation. Okay. So now you, sh now you saw that how I was able to do it using a two modeling. Now your next question would be, okay, why is this not working? Okay, so now your next question would be, what if we don't want to build two models? What if uh, what if we want to keep it simple? So for, for you, I have these options of using these Python libraries and they're basically build, doing it everything for you. Ex look, nobody is going to do data cleaning, feature engineering for you, but these are going to build the uplift models for you, just one model and they'll give you the uplift score. And then basically you can decide what to do, what not to do. So with that guys, uh, uh, keeping it a very short session uh, because I've got some work. Uh, please don't, uh, my conclusion is please don't waste your valuable resources on customers other than persuadables. Uh, any questions, any comments, any feedback you have, you want to discuss something, I'm open to it. Okay, so the question is, uh, what is the feature matrix here and on what basis uh, did we for it like this? I do not understand the question. Are you talking about the, the feature engineering that we did? Uh, I don't, uh, if you can elaborate your question. Okay, so so meanwhile, while we wait for the question, uh, guys, let me know your uh, uh, thoughts. Are you guys doing uplift modeling as well? Have you heard of it before? How is it working out? Because I've done a lot of uplift modeling for the companies I've worked with and even on the consulting projects. 
especially really useful for the big companies, uplift modeling, uh, when there's a lot, lot at stake, and more so for the software as a service companies. Okay, uh, so this is a uh, so this is a data set. Uh, this is uh, I have it from one of the consulting clients I work with, and uh, I work with them on the uplift modeling project. So we had this uh, data set. I took a small subset of the data set to make it uh, more equally distributed. So yeah, that's coming from the consulting project I worked on. And uh, uh, if you're talking about the attributes, which would be essentially which features are important, which variables are not important. So that part, there are a lot of ways to do it. Uh, we have a no code auto ML platform where we do it. But if you were to do it on your own, you would be, of course, looking at the correlation. You would be, of course, looking at the VIF. You would be, of course, looking at uh, which variables are important. Maybe you build a quick decision tree to get an idea which variables are important, and then you use them. A lot, lot of ways to know which variables are important, if that's the question. If the question is about the data set, it's from uh, one, one of our consulting clients. Though I took a very small subset of that data set. Let me know if I was, uh, let's say we start from scratch. How would you pick attributes domain? Okay. If I were to start from a scratch and uh, assuming I have no domain knowledge. And in this case, I had some 35 variables. The original data set, in fact, had uh, 250 variables. So I took a subset of it. So if I were to start from a scratch, I would be just running some regular practices to see feature, to see which variables are important. And then I would be feeding them into the machine learning models. So I would check first correlation. Uh, if they are too, uh, too correlated with each other, then I'll drop one of the variables. With, if there's a pairing, I'll drop one of the variables. Then I'll be checking at the, the VIF. Uh, then I could be also checking the, the inconsistencies, like if the variables look good, if they have a lot of missing values or not, if, if they don't have any structural issues with them, I'll be looking at that one as well. For example, if some, something has uh, too many typos or if something has too many inconsistencies, too many formats, I may consider dropping them out. Then, uh, Eventually, I'll be looking at uh, maybe I'll build a quick decision tree or maybe I'll do a quick light GPM model to understand which variables are important. And I'll be using only those variables in my model building. I'll be not using all the 35 variables in the model building. That part I got, but how would you form a data set of those 202 attributes? Uh... Okay. So if you mean how was I able to create a data set, this is not a fictional data set. This is not what I, something I came up with. This is a client's data set. I'm using their data set, if that's the question. Okay, there's another question that, uh, how can we decide what percentage of discounts to give to each customer? Okay, great question. So for that, uh, we'll have to be looking at your historical data set. So, uh, assuming that in the past that you've had uh, run many campaigns, 10% discount campaign, 20% discount, buy one, get one feed uh, campaigns, and you ran it on a, on, on, uh, on a few thousands of people. So what we are going to be doing is uh, we are going to be creating a first uplift modeling. So we'll be looking at the problem one by one. So first we'll be looking at uh, uplift modeling of discount, no discount. Okay, so no discount people, it would be a combination of all the people who are, uh, sorry, discount combination of all the people who are giving any discount and no discount. So once I know the persuadables, once I know, okay, I need to give, be giving these people some discount so that they'll take the, so that they'll take the product, then I can do something simple like a regression modeling. So a regression modeling is what uh, so I'll have the target variable discount, the 40, 30, 20, 50, or even I can make it a categorical modeling. And then I'll be predicting that, okay, now these are my persuadables. 
So what are the next steps? What kind of discount I should be giving? So I'll have that as the target variable and I'll run a model of this. I'll build models on that one. So I'll easily have predictions. For example, John, uh, John is a persuadable customers. The chances of, uh, so, so let's say you have 20, 30, 40, 50% discount, four types of discount. Uh, so there will be a probability under each one. So John has 0.7 probability of responding to a 20% campaign. Uh, John has 0.5% uh, of responding to a 30% discount campaign. So, so that one will automatically come out uh, once I have the persuadables, the list of persuadables. I can do a regression or a classification modeling and then I can have it automatically. Another approach that I can be doing is uh, that instead of um, uh, taking no discount discounts, I can do an uplift modeling. Uh, on and I can create multiple models. So, so let's say 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. Okay. Uh, so I take the people with a 20 percent discount, 30 percent discount, 40, 50, and I build models. So I build models for first one, second one, third one, fourth one. And remember, I was showing you the subtraction of the probabilities. Similarly, I'll do the subtraction of the probabilities. Uh, whichever I see the 20% minus 30%, 20% minus 40%, 20% minus 50%. So wherever the subtraction value is the highest, I'll take that one as, so I'll take all the possibilities, uh, offer one minus, offer two, offer one minus, offer three. So wherever I see the, uh, I see the largest or the smallest difference, I'll choose that offer. So another approach to do it. Uh, but that will introduce the biasness and variance in the future data set. How are we over overcoming that? True. Uh, so, so we're building double models, almost, sort of. So the inaccuracies will get added up, but then there's no other alternative. Uh, so you have to build two models. Uh, if you were to just use uplift modeling, it will tell you, it can compare the two things, uh, whether 20% discount is good or whether 30% discount is good, whether no discount or discount is good. To know the exact discount percentage, I am assuming that you already have run previous campaigns in the past. If you haven't run uh, campaigns in the past with the different discounts, then there's no data, cannot be doing anything. But in case if you want to be choosing that, okay, what discount now? Uh, and if you don't have more than two values, then you need to be doing a uh, double modeling sort of. So yes, it will introduce some biasness. Yes, it will introduce some variance, but there's no alternative. You, you can't have, uh, have it that way. Or you can, uh, but that will also have some, something going on. Like if you do it as a classification, where you have 20, 30, 40, 50, which one is uh, giving me the best, but that, that, that doesn't necessarily tell you the persuadables gives you some idea, but doesn't tell you. Again, you need to be looking at your data set. Uh, I'm happy to have a discussions with you. I'm happy to have, have a look at your data sets, uh, give, it a, give it a glance and, and then help you. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I can be reached out at thankyou.com. Can be added on, uh, yeah, let attach my LinkedIn. So a lot depends on the data set as well, or how many campaigns you've run in the past with a different discount. Okay, perfect. Guys, any more questions? Uh, it's 1.30. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys. Uh, looking forward to hear from you next week. Next week, I think we have this, uh, uh, this webinar on customer future value where we are going to be building a customer future value for the people. And then we're going to be strategizing based on that one, as well as do some segmentation. So with that guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, soon I'll be sharing a uh, deck with you over the email as well. Thank you guys.